severe weather day for sure. Hey everyone, yeah. thanks for joining us. I'm Julie Martin. And I'm Jen Carfagna. Welcome to America's Morning Headquarters. We continue taking you through the mid-morning hours. There's a lot getting into the weekend. A lot of storms, a yeah. lot of heat. Both are building and to some extent they kind of interact. They do. Um, you know, we've got plenty of uh, energy or juice in the atmosphere, yeah. if you will. Yep. So yep. Uh, we've got the really moist and soggy air coming yep. up from the Gulf of Mexico. And then uh, we've got all those uh, mid and upper level parameters too going on. So We're going to take you through all of it. Plus, it is Friday, so we go to the national parks every Friday. Yeah. We're going to hit all 63 this year, um, and we're going to take you to one that maybe uh, that you wouldn't expect to find not too far from Chicago. Yeah, you know, and I'm from those parts, and I have never been there, oh, so I can't wait to okay, see great. it. Yeah, and um, in today's big deal, though, we have three words for you. Storms. We've been watching it across the central and even western plains all week, and now we move it into the northern plains, and it's all because of this upper level low. I will show you where it is in a second, but first up, the storm threat for today. We've got, you watch the numbers go up, the thermometer rising. Seattle, look at our forecast. Saturday 86, Sunday 88, and we are still in the 80s on Monday. Could we hit 90? It's not in the forecast, but it's possible. It's only two degrees away, and our average first 90-degree day is usually two months away, July the 3rd. The earliest 90 on record, May 17th. So if we do it this weekend, it would be a record. We've got a chance. And, of course, watching all, not just there, but all throughout the Northwest as temperatures heat up. Upper 80s today from Portland to Medford in Oregon into Washington, into Idaho. Our numbers are going to be rising as we get through the weekend. This skinny little ridge is the reason why. It's really just affecting us right here across the Pacific Northwest down into California. Numbers there going up about 10 to 20 degrees above average there on the temperature. And this is not good news considering the fire situation we've had across western Canada, especially in Alberta. We've seen the smoke from those fires affecting us all the way across the lower 48 into the northeast, affecting your skies. Maybe some you some breathing issues but the heat is going to be a problem getting in through the weekend here no rain in sight we've also got those heat alerts and heat advisories down all the way through coastal washington and oregon and saturday and sunday are going to be the hot days mother's day weekend it is steamy out there 91 in portland 93 in medford you know the rivers are running fast they're also very cold still and so that's not necessarily a great way to cool down to seeking shade will be the best thing and you've got you know sunday the day in seattle where we have that chance of hitting 90. now there's 91 percent of the country julie that has air conditioning and you say great but yeah. only 44 percent in the seattle area so that's the problem that like this one part of the nation yeah. so hot doesn't have the AC. Yeah, it's funny. I was looking, and one of the local stations there actually had posted where you can buy it, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. Um, but uh, ready or not, summer is coming, right? That's right. The heat is already scorching the country. <laughs> it's true. Oh, I mean, it, I actually like the heat, and, but when you're doing work and you're sweating, yeah. and it's, it makes yeah. it tough. Yeah, and you can't drink enough water. It's just yeah. like, ugh, yeah. sweat's rolling off. Well, go to Twitter to send us your comments, and if you have any pictures, please share. You get the bonus points for that. Use the hashtag YesTV. Yeah, pictures of your sweaty self. <laughs> and maybe your garden. I posted pictures last weekend of my garden, and yeah. I had to hand till it because I don't have a tiller. Anyway, everyone said it looked like I was digging a grave. Oh, it's a garden. Oh. It's a garden. <laughs> Turns out, kind of saved that you... off the humidity a little bit. It's not that common, though. But I know. It's good. Exactly. Right? I yeah. hate to admit it, but it's yes. every once in a while. <laughs> Uh, well, today it's all about the heat building is one of our top stories, but also thunderstorms, which will be building again through the afternoon. Yeah, we're talking about the possibility of large hail again, mm -hmm. damaging winds really all the way through Mother's Day. Yeah. Um, so a lot of those outdoor plans, I'm afraid, on Sunday yeah. might have to move inside. There's definitely some true washouts of a forecast, so we'll get to all that. I'm going to talk about where we're going to see storms today and you know where things are going to evolve. You know, we don't have a lot right now going on in Texas, but look at the forecast. We've got a lot to come with severe weather in the forecast here, stretching from all the way from Del Rio and Laredo right up through the central plains. So we've got a large zone with thunderstorm chances. Things aren't really moving out. Everything is kind of trapped underneath the pattern that we're in, which is in general a ridge across the east. So the movement of storms across this area in particular don't have a lot of steering. So I think we're going to end up with some big rain chances along with that risk for severe weather. And you don't want to get under a hailstorm for a long time, right? That's always a bad thing. Now, today, scattered showers do develop right through the afternoon. Today won't be our wettest day. That comes through the weekend. But you'll see as we get into later this evening, some storms really start to fire up. Sport Stockton to Midland, the dry line will be a 
trigger. We'll see that over towards Oklahoma City. And now all of a sudden, as we get into tonight, this sets the stage for what we're about to see through the weekend. Heavy rain, it could be continuous. We see this all night long. Look at San Antonio, and that's approaching Austin. You know, once we get through the weekend, there is another disturbance that comes up. It's the southern branch of the jet stream that brings all of the action. And so it's these subtle little features which just come in to enhance what's already there, the moisture that's in place. The amount of moisture in the atmosphere or the precipitable water is running at about as high as it typically is here in the middle of May. So that leads to concerns for flooding. Just the fact that we have so much rain in the forecast means that we have a flood watch up and it's all weekend long. It goes in effect through Sunday, if not even Monday, I think for a couple of spots. So we see this forecast here looking at the rainfall and while it looks continuous, often you think, oh, it's thunderstorms, we'll get a break. No, it's pretty continuous, actually. Once we hit later tonight, it continues right through the weekend, and we see that continue into Monday as well. Three to five inches of rain, a possibility. There will be places that get locally more than that, and that will most certainly lead to a flash flooding risk. So making sure you are just staying weather aware. To the north, we also have storm chances, but it won't be when the spring wildflowers are in bloom and temperatures are warm. And joining us now to Tuffle, I mean, the waters in some cases kind of looks like the Caribbean. Yeah. Well, what are some of the favorite outdoor activities that people can do at the park? No, well, this weekend kicks off the 1966 hiking challenge. 19 hikes totaling 66 miles. So tell us more about that and how people can join in the challenge. Sure. I realize those big sand dunes were right there on Lake Michigan uh, right. in northern Indiana. So, Ralphie Wilkinson, thank you so much for joining us and telling us more about Indiana Dunes National Park. Um, we, you know, I bet you a lot of people who already go there and visit there, they're like, don't give away our secret, right? <laughs> don't tell anyone. <laughs> so that's a stunning place. Yeah, and there's nothing better than if you live in the city and you never get out and see nature yep. to just drive an hour and it's there so you far. are. It's like another universe. Exactly. Weeds. It's just yeah, in general and in the heat. Well, both. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you just feel the sweat dripping off. I know. Of you. It's just so gross. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I said anything that gets you dirty because then the dirt sticks to you. Yeah. And, yep. It'll be that kind of weekend. Well, earlier this week for Question of the Michigan, where we have a live camera for people who are at hearing that some of the ski resorts might stay open until July. Yeah. Well, if they got the snow. They got the snow, right? They got the snow. So thanks for choosing America's Morning Headquarters to get you through the mid-morning hours. The Weather Channel is helping you plan for all of your big events ahead. And this weekend, I know you have a lot of things planned. It's Mother's Day weekend. There's graduations, graduation parties, weddings, everything. And there's a lot of storms to work around. Yeah, unfortunately, we've got another severe weather threat. Mm -hmm. Flooding is possible, somewhere mm -hmm. like Texas. So we're going to be watching all of those things as well. Plus, the heat is on. And record highs are possible in the Northwest here in an area where... Air conditioning doesn't happen in every home, so this is a concern. Yeah, uh, you could beat uh, the heat, though, with a trip to today's National Park. It's on the shores of Lake Michigan. We're going to take you there in a little bit. Yeah, this is a good discovery, so stay tuned for that. Yeah, it's not a real popular, like, overly popular one. Yet. That you know about. Yes, yes. we're, we're going to make it popular. A good <laughs> secret. It's a good secret. It's a gem. Yes. Yes. yes okay. Right. Well, in today's big deal, three words, rain.
What's uh, the bad the girl's Titan? area? No, yeah. Ursula. Ursula. That's Ursula. right. Ursula. But I want to know, it shouldn't be called the wet tortugas? I know. You know <laughs> I know. Nothing dry about that scuba diving mission there. Back in the day, I suppose, at one point. So what do you think? You think that was a floating hospital and they just sank it? No, I think it was above ground. Mm -hmm. You think? Agreed, I do. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, they All keep right. looking. Maybe they find Atlantis also <laughs> used to be above ground, right? I think we talking? need to take a field trip, all of us down there, do some uh, investigation. That'd be fun. All right, get the show on the road. All right, you guys got to hit the road, and we'll take Ooh. it from here. Thanks for uh, staying with us on this 11th day of May. Oh, my gosh. The month is almost over. How is it flying by like Ooh. this? Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. Well, the Weather Channel helping you plan for all of your big events ahead. We are closer to the weekend. It is almost Friday, and storms will keep on rolling on. And this is par for the course for the month of May. It's a very active month here. And we had some lows in the beginning of the month, but now things are changing. And look at the storm reports mm -hmm. here just the last 24 hours. And we still have storms rolling across parts of the south. And that's also causing some even yeah. warnings being issued and some flash flooding going on. You know, what's interesting is this was so busy, and yet these very same areas are some of the places we're targeting today. But it changes a little bit in terms of what we're expecting. Right. So we're still watching the risk of some damage, wind, yep. hail, and even possible tornadoes, but that also increases. heavy rain. Mm -hmm. And if you check out Colorado, parts of New Mexico, there's snow <laughs> right now. We could see yes. perhaps some areas maybe a half a foot of snow. Yep here in mid-May. Yep, we're going to keep it going. Uh, and Paul, in today's big deal, it's all about how we make it. Well, forget your rain boots. You may need a snorkel. Look at all of this that is headed into Texas. As we head over the coming days, we're talking about rain, flooding, and the wet weather is already causing problems. Let's show you where roads underwater in Texas, and it's not just flooding trouble. A severe threat is stretching into the plains as well. Look at that hail bouncing. Funnel clouds, golf ball size hail, and we can see more of all of this. This is America's Morning Headquarters. I'm meteorologist Stephanie Abrams, alongside meteorologist Jim Cantori and Jordan Steele. Jim, an active day yesterday. I think things are going to ramp up even more with our two low pressures kind of both going to zip right up into the plains. Yeah, so the one. Into San Antonio, and thanks to our virtual view technology, we can transport you to San Antonio, Texas, where clouds are going to rule the skies over the next couple of days. The rain is actually going to ramp up on our Friday and Saturday. You can't see it from here, but I think the river walk is right over there. I think it's over there. So if you have plans to be on the river walk or take, you know, one of those boat rides on the river walk, you might have to reschedule, but it could be soaking, could be flooding, possibly localized pockets of double digit rainfall is certainly a possibility for some spots into Texas. So let's have a look at our forecast here because there is a lot going on. We're going to start you in San Antonio. We're actually above average on rainfall by over four and a half inches. And for the entire month of May, we average about four and a half inches. So we could possibly get an entire month's worth of rainfall and add to our surplus here into San Antonio. Friday, Saturday will be our big days. By the way, we desperately need rain into central and western Texas. So this rain is actually setting up to be right where we need it, that nice big swath. How about Houston? Well, Houston, we're actually below average by over four and a half inches. So we need the rain. And for the month of May, we average about five inches. So this is through Monday. Could we possibly get a month's worth of rainfall in less than a week? It's there, and that could cause some flooding. And by the way, some of the models are showing the potential of three inch an hour rainfall rates, potentially eight hours, eight inches in 24 hours, and that could cause flooding. And you can see the flood advisories that we have posted here, all thanks in part to this low pressure we have spinning around that is reflected all the way down to the surface, a little troughiness there. So we're getting a lot of lift in the atmosphere. Victoria, another place where we're above average, because we're coast, closer to the coast. And we could see maybe half a month's worth of rainfall here into Victoria. Most of it coming, unfortunately, as we head into our Saturday here. But again, one to two inches for us. Abilene, another spot. We're actually a little bit below average. Jim, we're in that drier area here into Abilene. So we could get a month's worth of rain, maybe two months' worth of rain out of this. Yeah, this is going to be kind of, you know, the outlook where they have moderate at the WPC that we could see up to some models wanting to pump out up to three inches in an hour, eight inches in 24 hours. That is a lot of rain, but it's not out of the question. That's why they, they actually say there is a, quote, non-zero chance that they could see that. 
So it, it's not a super high chance, but it's a non-zero chance that we could see that. Essentially, you want to be prepared for the wetness. And here's where we could see it today. Jordan was showing you some heavier rain back into central Texas. That really pops up as we head over the weekend with our next piece of energy kind of coming in. This, we have low pressure in the upper levels of the atmosphere. We also have it reflecting down to the surface in the form of a trough. That's what that little line stands for. And that's all lift. And we've got moist air it's going to be coming in so this is really the first system notice this goes through Monday and then we get more energy that is going to spin up here into Texas and really cause this heavier rain so those are two different pieces this is not all at one time so let's talk about our pieces of energy this is number one that I was talking about and then this is number two and what these are going to do is they're basically going to meet up like this why because this trough and don't forget we have our big jet coming in like that this wants to pull this system up. It's bigger, so it's just going to kind of bring it up together. And so that's why we stay messy right into the center of the countries because these two are going to be merging together for us. Let's start into Texas, though. Look at our dew point temperatures. Yowzas in the 60s and 70s. It is juicy out there. It is moist out there. It's wet out there. There's convection. It is a stormy morning for us here into Houston. Freeport, we're about to get it as well. Also rotating up into that I-10 core. So that's where you have that flash flooding threat is going to be likely here into eastern Texas, Louisiana. You could see some severe thunderstorms, but it doesn't have to be severe. You saw all that lightning that was firing up this morning, and we could see more of that with the convection. But there it is kind of rotating around. You can kind of see that bit of counterclockwise spin in this model here showing you. Look at that. Look at that spinning around. And it's going to be moving northbound because that trough to the west is scooping it up. Again, we've got a little scoopage going on like we did last week. And so we will still see some storms developing as we head through tomorrow. There is that potential for that flash flooding. So let's talk about how all this is also going to cause that severe weather threat, Jim, into the plains too. Yes, yeah, so they got their own issues with the scent, right? Rising air motion. So we're going to see that deep up slope. What that means technically? Are you? There, it like, does mean something. I just don't know exactly. Katie we're talking to or it's get ready as all blank breaks loose. You know, <laughs> well, it, be Katie, ready. Katie, Texas is going to have to Katie bar the door. Get ready to buy the, bar the door. Right. Exactly. Even and though Katie. I don't know if we're calling someone named Katie or what we're doing with that. But we're I'll figure I'll, it out. I'll hit the we're Google. Give it, hit the Google machine. I'm hitting the Google. All right. um, okay. Let's talk about how I was mentioning. You know, central western Texas is where it is the driest. And we are going to set up with another upper level low coming in. We have two different systems. This is our first one. You saw the animate, animate first. Then we have our second upper level low coming in. That's really as we head into the weekend. And there's a lot of moisture in place. We have some oomph in the atmosphere. So that means there's a possibility tomorrow of seeing thunderstorms. But let's roll through the day today and look at all the moisture. Jim was showing you all the moisture. And by the way, I was looking at some PWATs just momentarily, just a little bit ago. And into Texas, right here along this coastal area, we typically can squeeze out about 1.3 inches of rain if we took a column of air. That's how much we could squeeze out of the atmosphere. But we have values that are like 1.5, 1.6. They're not at record level, which is like 1.8 something. But we're above average in the amount of moisture that we have in the atmosphere to squeeze out. So that's why we do have that threat for flooding here. We have a lot that could come out, and we see more of that as we head into tomorrow and Friday. And then, Jordan, we get ready for our next system Friday into the weekend, and it could bring storms. All right, we do want to are a few changes to this year's list. We're going to get to that in a little bit, but we want to start in the beginning. Let's start with the history of Arlene. It's one of only two names from the 1959 original list that are left. You see, it has been used 11 times so far, and since the names recycle every six years, so you'll see this list again in six years, some will get retired, but it was last used, Arlene here, in 2017. That's when it became the first named tropical storm to form in the Atlantic Basin during the month of April since 2003. We hadn't had an April storm since 2003. We had one, though, here in 2017. You can see it had zero impact to the land and marked the third year in a row that a system formed before the official start of the season. This is a look at all the April and May named storms that we've had over time. And you can see there are a few of them actually have impacted us here on land. And as we have a closer look at Brett, the second name on the list, the last time the storm developed, the National Hurricane Center designated it a potential tropical cyclone. You're going to see that again. We've been using that since. And what that means is 
we have a disturbance. It's not yet a tropical cyclone, but has a very high chance of actually becoming one. They do pose the threat of a tropical storm or hurricane conditions on land within 48 hours. So that allows the National Hurricane Advisories to be issued. So that's what's interesting about Brett. It was the first time we actually used that. Now, Jim, we are going to continue to break down the names on the list tomorrow on America's Morning Headquarters. We'll move on to our C name, Cindy, which actually is very interesting. Ah, yes.